Very well then. Uh, I'll start us off by saying uh, welcome to uh, all of you viewers. This will be our uh, second game with a proper studio, but the first one where we are not uh, physically learning together. So it will be one of our grand games. It goes by the name of A Case of the Blues this time. And this will be the presentation of the teams. And we have some great surprises in store for you there. And uh, also we will do a little pre-game analysis after to look over what can be an interesting matchups, what will happen on the different fronts brought to you by our uh, caster studio. Uh, the match will be hosted by me and uh, Victor and uh, Peter Turin, that is not here, and a new addition to our caster team, uh, Algo Turin. Would you like to introduce yourself, Algo? Yes, hello, thank you. Yes, I'm the new addition to the studio. Um... It will be a great, a great challenge. Um, I'm, I'm, I think it's a conspiracy uh, from um, the other players, Martin and Dawn, to keep my medal count lower, to put me in the studio instead of in the game. Um, but yes, I've never missed a grand game, but uh, this time, instead of uh, playing, I will be, uh, it will be very fun to see what you guys are up to. And it will be very fun to have you as well, because uh, Algot here is uh, one of our OG Hygge Hoy. He has been with the community since the start, is one of the founders, and also, as you heard here, a very decorated uh, commander. So uh, his expertise will be, will be a, a great addition to, to our casting team. Uh, so, are, are you um, uh, the ones that are uh, sliding up the team presentations? That's me. That's you, Don. Okay, our our technical uh, technical expert here. Uh, well, I think uh, we might just get right into it. Yeah, I let's think. go. Let's go. So we have a bit of a delay on the stream here. So if uh, my reaction seems slow, that's the that's the reason. Uh, but now we have our oh, first axis. Yes. Uh, and we have, uh, on Germany, we have uh, uh, Magnus and we have Mosberg. And on Italy, we have Rosen. Uh, what are your thoughts on this, uh, Algot? Well, uh, this is the... Magnus has played a lot of majors and played um, in a lot of ways. Uh, but this is the first time he's going to be main controlling Germany. And um, some say that Japan or UK is the hardest, but I would say pressure-wise, um, main, main controlling Germany is... Uh, uh, is the hardest uh, because you have the entire faction on your shoulders and uh, if you do not uh, perform um, people will be sad in chat so uh, I'm looking forward to see Magnus taking on this role uh, Do we know if yeah. Mospa has been uh, playing Germany before? I'm not I sure actually I, haven't I have this uh, master sure. document and I can see that Mospa mostly plays uh, meme nations and co-ops <laughs> uh, he has played like Vichy three times uh, but so, yes, uh, in, in June 2021, he did play co-op on Germany. All right. Yeah. And it will be interesting to see the coordination there, because uh, we know that Magnus and Mosberg, they know each other, and they can probably interact very well. And it's also quite few German players here, only two, uh, where it was a lot more in Bergodhof. So we will see if that condensation of the of the axis will uh, improve or um, uh, or uh, not improve the, the gameplay of, of Germany here. Now I see Mosberg is correcting me in chat that he hasn't play, been on uh, on a co-op on Germany, so my document is flawed. Uh, we'll, we'll make sure we fix that. If people remember <laughs> or, or, what they played in June 2021, write in the chat. Or he can't remember, Algot. Yeah. yeah maybe he, he, he's... He uh, doesn't want to remember. Right. It was a hard game. Data doesn't lie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was an Allies victory in that game. So yeah. yes, maybe that's the case. <laughs> true, true. And we have Rosen on Italy. And Rosen is, uh, is also a veteran player. He has five stars. So he has been with us a long time. And he has good experience. I think he has played the UK a lot um, historically. Uh, what, uh, what's your insight about, about Rosen's play style? I think we'll, well do he... an uh, excellent Italy, uh, that's for sure. He's one of our best Navy players, and you need to control the Navy as Italy, so I think he will uh, team up great with Germany here. 
I'm not, I'm not sure he would agree that uh, he would be one of the best naval players himself, but uh, he's quite humble on that front. So um, I think you're right that he will give uh, the UK a good match in the Mediterranean. Yeah, he's a strong micro player. He's a, a, a good theory crafter uh, and often has a few aces up his sleeve. So uh, I think it will be a, a good... Um... And it's also the first time he's playing Italy, according to the document. Uh, he has mained all other majors except France, uh, but this is the first time Italy. So um, exciting! No, yep, indeed, indeed. So uh, if we can go into presenting the majors on the or the next majors, it's very delayed, but it's coming up soon, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> We'll see. I have the full document here, but I don't want to uh, to ruin it. We have the UK player, uh, who is Sean. It's a new addition to the community, and uh, I have never spoken to to this player. Uh, but maybe Johannes, uh, who has uh, admitted him to the to the community, <laughs> might want to say a few words. Yeah, I think Sean, our official first outsider joining the community on his like um, on his own initiative. Uh, so uh, that's very fun to have an outsider coming in, uh, but also to step right into playing a major is a big, uh, uh, a big step. So, um, but he um, he told me that he have quite a lot of experience in multiplayer. Uh, I heard something around uh, four thousand hours plus. Uh, so I expect him to be a um, strong UK, and he's British uh, of nationality as well. So. He said he would key, fight for king and country. So I expect nothing less than a good UK. Yeah, with those, with those hours, I think he will be a force to be reckoned with in the Channel and in the Atlantic and in all of the other places. Because that's the thing with the UK, that you are, you are pretty much everywhere. And uh, that can be challenging for a single player on the country. But we did have that in Bergwardhof as well, and it worked out quite well for them. So uh, it will be very interesting to see. Well, they uh, they did lose the game, but uh, oh, well. just... <laughs> no. But but the UK, even if you are very experienced as UK, there's always something you can uh, forget. You you forget to click the operation fork, and uh, you get uh, something invaded, or you forget to do the guarantees, and. Um... You have uh, five continents and and four of the great oceans. It's it's uh, it's a lot. Indeed, it is. Uh, and now we have the Soviet Union here coming up. We have Francis, Oscar, and uh, Matthias. Uh, it's uh, three very decorated players, very veteran players that will be cooperating in the, on the Soviets this game. Uh, and uh, that might prove a challenge for our more uh, untested uh, Germany players. But uh, then again, veterancy does not always uh, grant you the success in the games. But uh, Francis is coming into the game with a strong showing from Bergwardhof, where he took home both uh, the player of, play of the game and greatest grit with his Hungary. So uh, maybe he is able to turn the tables uh, uh, back uh, on the axis. Uh, so that will be interesting to see. Yeah, it's a it's a dangerous uh, three-player combination on the Soviets. Yeah, and uh, I know Francis. He played Soviets two times, somewhat recently. I think um, last year he played them two times as the main controller. So I think that uh, he has some experience uh, with him but going into this challenge as well. That is mostly on the Blitz games, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, but you get the so, feel for it because Soviet is—it's yeah. quite an, another thing playing Soviet than most other countries. Yeah. So just especially the, as the main controller. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And we have uh, Japan uh, with uh, Jakob and Jesper. And uh, the uninitiated viewer might think, "Oh, three star? That's not so much." But uh, Jakob has uh, made a name for himself in our community. Uh, even though he does not have the most stars, he has a very high win rate, one of the consistently higher ones among, uh, uh, among, the, uh, among the players that has a few games under the belt. And uh, he lost the last game when he was playing the United States, but uh, uh, Japan is very much a comfort pick for him. He has done some very good plays in Japan uh, historically. And will be inter it will be interesting to see how it works with uh, Jesper as well. Yeah, Jokob is a, it's a strong player. Uh, he also likes to to test the boundaries of uh, what's possible and not. Uh, 
both in terms of like actual um, efficiency, but also like um, uh, yeah, not not breaking the rules, but maybe you know stretching uh, stretching to the limit. Um, yeah, and uh, the results are often um, often very exciting to see. And Definitely. also uh, playing with uh, Jesper, I think if I'm not uh, completely wrong, I think that's uh, Jakob's uh, roommate as well, uh, living in the same apartment. So they will have a good, or you would expect them to have a good uh, uh, pre-prepping together, yeah. uh, planning for this game. Yeah, definitely. And Japan is also one of those countries where you can really prep a lot and, and get a lot of use of it. Um, China War is against an AI, so if you if you do a good prep, you can get a good head start in the game and be very strong when the, the real war breaks out. Yeah, and and also since this is not a physical game, uh, if they are roommates, they will have that co- communication uh, direct line uh, if they are, are placed at the same place. Because we were reasoning uh, a bit around that when we were at Bergodhof, that uh, there is a certain amount of communication and insight into your teammates' builds and strategies that you uh, can only get when you are physically in the same room, I believe. And that's uh, that can be a great advantage as well. And uh, we have uh, uh, on uh, Manchu, we have uh, Hasleberg. Uh, yeah, uh, the lone player on, on Manchu. Uh, I don't uh, know if he has played Manchu before. Not, no, I'm not, not sure either. But he comes with like two very good uh, games in his back into this one. Um, he played France uh, two two games ago and got decorated with um, the Greatest Grit Award, if I remember correctly. And then he played uh, as your second chair in Italy last game and did a hell of a game, uh, Algot, together with you. Yeah, he's, so, a, he's uh, a good player, good support player, and he has played Manchuria twice. He might oh. be one of our more uh, experienced Manchurias. So, uh, yeah, might be a, a threat on land and sea and air. I don't know what his build is going to be. <laughs> but that, that might be needing uh, needed uh, looking into the coming uh, lineups on the left side of the screen. Definitely. We have uh, Martin and Kalle on uh, the USA. Two very veteran players. Uh, our first eight-star general out in the roster here. Uh, will be playing uh, the one of the majors in the Allies, so this will be uh, this will be a challenge in US, also together with Kalle, and also together with Dankus. Uh, this will be our first celebrity reveal, or uh, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, we have uh, Dankus uh, joining us for uh, for this game. He has also joined the community, so uh, a warm welcome to Hygge Hoy, Dankus. And uh, uh, it will be very interesting to see how the US and Rush match up against uh, this Japan and uh, this uh, Manchu that we have. Yes, uh, Jakob, Jesper and Hasselberg are all strong players, but uh, here we have... Uh, at least Martin is at least in the discussion of being one of our community's best players, and then of course uh, Dankus Mimikus, the the internet celebrity, um, which at least according to to many sources has a strong micro. So um, it will be a, it will be a good matchup. Um, hopefully it will be even and uh, a lot of good good grinding and surrounds. I hope. Yeah, let's see. There, there might be. Also, I think that the Jakob playing. Um... Um, Japan, uh, knowing that he has a very good players both on the other side of the Pacific, but also uh, Dankus in Burma. Uh, I think Jakob will definitely spend some extra hours going into this game to see if he can I think that uh, it will be a, a very interesting Pacific game with these players. And moving on, we have uh, Ivan on uh, Spain. And um, uh, thinking of theory crafters. <laughs> uh. yeah. Indeed, uh, it it will be interesting to see uh, to to see this Spain. We have had uh, we were discussing this in the pre-game analysis up towards Bergodhof that we have had games where the Spanish civil war has been lost by the nationalists. But I do think we have a rule against that now, so that will not be a risk. And, uh, and also, uh, thinking about how much uh, Ivan likes to prep, uh, I, I don't think there's a big risk uh, he will lose the Civil War. No, 
And he's getting no. better and better. I would say his Finland last game was really, really well played. Uh, but there were a lot of Soviet players against him, but he held out for a long time, a lot longer than we have had planned for. So, and without and a, a lack support. of uh, reinforcements from the rest of the Axis. Yeah. Uh, it was. Uh, but Spain is a great country for uh, trying out new things. There's uh, literally eight, nine different paths you can go and still be viable. Um, yeah, in basically uh, any part of the of the game. So uh, it will be very, very exciting to see. Yeah, um, and that's that's also one of those countries that can become a really, uh, really a heavy hitter late game. Uh, if you set up correctly, if you do well in the Civil War, you can really snowball from there because you have a lot of resources at your disposal uh, if you manage to set it up correctly. So the prep work and theory crafting for Neva might come in handy there. Moving on, we have uh, France, and uh, here we have uh, Johannes, the chairman himself. <laughs> um, he picked uh, maybe one of his favorite countries, I think. Is it correct? Yeah, I, I've been wanting to play France for I don't know how many... Yeah, I've, I've been waiting for this moment to play France. I played them once a year ago on a Blitz game, and that was probably the best game I've ever played. Um, but, you know, no recognition from the Blitz games, as you know, no awards or anything. So I hope to make some some kind of fun uh, redo of that uh, that game or that uh, fr uh, French build. So let's see. Yeah, it will be interesting to see. Uh, France is also one of those countries that can be a, a very big uh, hurdle for, for the Axis if you manage to set it up correctly and can also be quite a menace late game. We also see in the chat here, we have uh, Crafting Ruby that has said that he has played with uh, Dankus a couple of times and he is okay. And uh, <laughs> Debaser does the uh, initiated analysis here that as long as he managed to keep his cool, otherwise he will just tilt and lose focus. <laughs> so uh, I will not uh, rate the, the truth in that statement, but uh, it will be interesting to see then if uh, Jakob Jesper and Hasleby will manage to tilt him. <laughs> and now... Um, uh, uh, we have Hungary as well. Or uh, sorry, you were saying something, Algot? No, it was uh, actually moving on to Hungary, and we have Don, who's also here with us in the studio. Um, Hungary, uh, the armored menace, maybe. If you go, we don't know what build you'll you will go. Or air with. controller, maybe. Or air controller, or uh, or cavalry. Is it yeah. uh, is it the first time playing uh, Hungary for you? Yeah, I think it's. I almost never play miners in the Euro Axis, so uh, it's almost my first time playing Euro Axis and going against uh, Soviet. I think I played Finland once or something like that. So it will be really, really interesting to see and be on the other side of the fence, so to say, for me as a veteran Soviet player with like six games or something uh, in the East. So I will, I will enjoy it. I will just keep calm, have a couple units, and enjoy my life, not being stressed out as you are with the majors. So I'm quite happy. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. So moving on, uh, we have the Axis uh, Miners. I think we have Canada first coming up, Pontus. Oh, indeed we do. Uh, now the picture isn't updated yet, but there we have him, Pontus on Canada. Uh, yeah, Canada can be a very impactful um, uh, country. We have seen a, a couple of, of Canada's really doing a lot of work in the Allies. Uh, so, uh, yeah, an, an interesting player for Canada. Uh, what do you think about this, Elgot? Uh, well, it, it is an interesting player. What I can see from his history and what I've, I've seen from him in games recently is that he has been more of a defensive player. Um, at least in, in recent games, then Canada, which is, well, I don't know the build yet, but uh, traditionally a more offensive player and maybe the allied spearhead in, in, in many ways. So it's a transition. I, I don't think he has, um, looking at earlier 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 games, there are not many armor countries uh, on here. Uh, now I just assume that he's going to do armor as Canada, but... Uh, so it might be a little bit of a, a new new experience for Pontus, but um, as we have seen, um, he has good grit. He doesn't uh, he doesn't give up in the first um, just just by being defeated once. So uh, you can wipe him; he'll come back. Um, and yeah, I think he's um, 
yeah, his playstyle will will probably be good for Canada, but it remains to be seen. Yeah, indeed, uh, we will uh, see. And uh, moving on to the Axis Miners, uh, we have on uh, Finland here, we have Andreas Eriksson, uh, five-star general, very experienced player. Uh, he has been uh, playing a lot of, uh, of Miners and also co-ops on the Majors. Uh, and uh, I don't know uh, his experience with Finland, but it is a challenging Finland situation because uh, uh, the micro situation uh, in the in the continuation war, especially, but also the winter war, can be challenging with three Soviet players, especially as veteran as as Francis, Oscar, and Matthias. Uh, but then again, uh, Andreas is no stranger to to the game either, so uh, it will be a, a, an interesting winter war. Yeah, he never played Finland, I can see. So it's the first time. But uh, what has he played? Uh, do you have an insight into his experience, Algot? Well, he has he has played, you know, like France and Spain are like his most uh, most played uh, countries. Um, but he, it's a it's a it's a broad palette of countries uh, among the miners. He has um, he has actually. Looking here, never played. Uh, yeah, France is a major technically, but uh, besides France, uh, he has only played minors, and he's also very comfortable with that. So, um, so a, a good player, uh, a, a stable player, um, has a tendency yeah. to he he can he can rage in voice chat, but uh, a lot of our players can can rage in voice chat, but. Um, <laughs> And Finland is a great country for it as well, because uh, there's a good chance you'll be kept. Um, so looking forward to listening in in the Axis chat when the Soviets start rolling in. But uh, I think he can do a very good job, uh, especially if he gets uh, air support and maybe some armor divisions from the rest of the Axis. Um, he can do... Um, yep. He can put up a good fight up in north. It will be very inter interesting to see. And just for uh, for you viewers, as an information, we will not be playing the Arms Against Tyranny. We will have uh, uh, the latest uh, Der Fighters Bra before Arms of Tyranny. So uh, a lot of the Finnish uh, OP new Winter War things uh, will not be uh, in the game. Uh, we'll see what grand game we implement those, but it will not be this one. So uh, uh, it will uh, it will not be a, a new winter war, so to speak. So uh, uh, as a reliable player on different miners and uh, experience from the Soviet side of the winter war, uh, I think he can he can put up a good fight there. And then we have Boat on uh, Romania. Uh, said in the chat, damn, I'm on Romania. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's an ominous sign or what do you say, Algot? It might be, but uh, I mean, Romania is one of the most wished countries when we put up the polls and you get to wish. It's like a very versatile Axis country. So uh, it's Canada on the Allied side and I think uh, Romania on the Axis side that are very frequently wished by our players. So um, I would say jackpot for you, but. Um, However, I'm starting. I'm trying to look uh, for some play history on both, but I can't find you in the document. I, I think he only played one game with us uh, before, so I think this is his uh, second game, yeah. and he played uh, New Zealand before this game, oh, okay. which was two games ago. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, not that much data so far, but it will be fun to see him uh, slugging it out on the Eastern Front or somewhere else. And you must build at least one aircraft carrier. That's the rule, the Romanian rule. <laughs> so I've heard. And also, I mean, um, going from New Zealand to Romania is really like day and night uh, in terms of the Im potential impact of a miner. Uh, so uh, it would be very interesting to see how he fares, especially on the Eastern Front, but you can do some shenanigans as well. And you uh, also have... Uh, Plenty of manpower. You can be wiped uh, several times and still have uh, impact after that. I think the record is PD. Exactly <laughs> I think PD has the record of being capitulated three times as Romania and still winning the game. That game. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see if that happens this time. And uh, another player that will uh, uh, will be playing for the Axis Miners is uh, Arvidsson on uh, Siam. Uh, that will be the one that is uh, going up against uh, Dankus a lot on, on that front. Uh, so it will be very interesting to see how he, how he fares there. Uh, 
He has one star, so he has been with us for five games. I think that's what, what it was, right? At least, yeah. Yeah, but, but we can say that we're. It's lucky that we have changed the pre-placing rules uh, so that Japan can pre-place in Siam. Otherwise, we might have had some issues there. But um, yeah, Jonathan has uh, played uh, several times Siam before, and um, yeah, stable, stable player, I would say. Yeah, and I mean, it is a bit of, as people said in the chat before, it has a tendency to be quite a static front line between uh, Siam and Rosh. So uh, it will be interesting to see how they try to get around that from both sides. There is a lot of potential for naval invasions and uh, different types of uh, trap possibilities and so on in order to break the static front line there, because there is a lot of mountains and the countries are... Uh, are not uh, majors, so uh, uh, it will be interesting to see how that develops. And uh, one very veteran player, uh, we have Jonte on Bulgaria. And that's another one of those uh, Eastern Europe uh, axis potential high impact countries, especially on the Eastern Front. And he is a player with uh, big experience, uh, so uh, uh, he can possibly translate that to, to good attacks. Or what? What do you think? Yeah, you. We should never underestimate Jomte. He's a um, yeah, veteran player, a strong player, and uh, getting free reigns at, as Bulgaria, not having to worry about the the broad micro macro things, um, and just focusing on your few divisions uh, can be very dangerous, especially when you see the rest of the rest of the uh, the Axis miners. We it will be a lot for the Soviets to handle. Yeah, and uh, someone said here, wow. What is this uh, in the chat? So <laughs> I will say, uh, as um, as uh, was said in the chat here, this is the team announcement for our grand game, a case of blues, uh, on the fourth of November, uh, ten Central European time, and uh, we are a community of players called Hygge Hoy. Uh, we recently had a very big physical game called Bergodhof, which was also endorsed by Paradox and had a lot of attention on it. So this will be our first grand game since then with the studio, with uh, me and Algot and uh, Petter as your casters. Uh, so uh, tune in on uh, the 4th of November, November and uh, you will see more of, of what this is. But uh, basically a fun in-house Hearts of Iron game with now significantly higher production value than we have had mm -hmm. historically. Moving on, we have on Yugoslavia, we have uh, Eric. Uh, no stars. Uh, I don't know uh, what miners he has played before. I do think he has been uh, in a lot of recent games, right? If I am not incorrect. Yeah, I think he played uh, Philippines and Siam recently. Yeah. He played not the really hardest hitters, but... No. Yeah. It's an interesting move from the Pacific to uh, uh to Europe. And uh, and that is quite a big uh, big change because in the Pacific you have all these islands, you have the naval game. Uh, it's a bit of a different situation in Europe where especially these countries are really uh, doing a lot of work in Barbarossa on the Eastern Front. Uh, so uh, we'll see how he adapts to that. But then again, it can be a, a good uh, quality to not be as much of a veteran player if you are going to adapt, because sometimes you get stuck in, in your old ways of thinking if you have been with us for a long time. And sometimes you need innovation, and uh, it will be interesting to see how Yugoslavia performs. I would say and Yugoslavia then... is a very noob-friendly country. Uh, you're, you're protected from all sides by your allies, and... Um... Yeah, not much, not very high expectations, but still very high potential uh, for impact, especially in the infantry game, uh, with Yugoslavia's focus tree being um, having good bonuses for your infantry. Yeah, yeah, and that's one of those things that uh, might be needed on the Eastern Front as well, because you have all this like Bulgaria, Romania, uh, Hungary that uh, uh, can be uh, uh, can be very like armor focused and uh, different things i mean they can go infantry as well obviously but it's good to have one of the one of the miners in the axis being able to do the infantry focus and on our last axis major then we have anton uh, playing vichy france uh, i don't know have we seen a lot of impact from vichy france recently it's uh, one of those countries that uh, uh, generally do not do a lot but i think they can have some impact 
I would say it is the worst country in the game. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, because you start you start so late and you have zero XP. I mean, I've played Vichy once, uh, and uh, it was the worst gaming experience of my life. Maybe no. You're really selling it. <laughs> no, but it's gonna be. It's, it's, it will fit Anton very well. Uh, it's his uh, second, third. Game? Yeah, second, second game. Second game. He was with us on Barrywood Hof playing Albania. This is a slightly less significant. Uh, country, I would say, but no, you have you have a very important role in the defense of Europe for the Axis side. Um, you just need to make sure you get some XP before you get invaded, because otherwise you're going to be on level two or three doctrine, while the rest of the players have level ten. So um, I, I just a, want to come challenge. I, I think that the that the players we have seen do playing them well have uh, focused on the naval play uh, of Vichy. They do start uh, sometimes with a big navy. And they can, especially if you focus on submarines, they can have bigger impact uh, in the Mediterranean. So, and I think we've seen it quite recently um, by Mossberg when he played um, Vichy, doing it very well. So, um, true. I shouldn't uh, understand it too much. There are a lot of uh, functions for Vichy, but strong, strong units on land is not one of them. So, um, hopefully, you get up your doctrines in time for D-Day. But if you don't, um, you're gonna get wiped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it will be interesting to see. Also, uh, again, this is one of those instances where it can be good to have a newer player on it because you get a fresh pair of eyes. Because uh, as you hear, the veterans have uh, a bit of a gloomy view to the potential impact on uh, Vichy France. And uh, if we get some some innovation, some fresh eyes, some ideas, it will be very interesting to see what they're able to do this game. Uh, moving on now to the allied miners. They are significantly more than... Uh, uh, than the Axis miners. Uh, so we, it will be interesting to see how that affects the game. Uh, we have on Australia, we have uh, Skoginge, four-star general, uh, significant experience. I don't know about his experiences in the Pacific. What do you think? I'm looking through the document now, and no, there are very few. It's uh, Spain, Soviets, Spain, Soviets, uh, Germany, Romania. Yeah, he has been on Japan. I don't know if it was as, as main controller or not. But yeah, he has it was. Been on Jap yeah. Japan it was main once. controller. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he lost that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, the it entire be... axis lost, so it's not, not just going. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the entire axis lost that match. Uh, but that is. So this is his second time in the Pacific. Uh, no, it's, it's been Japan twice. Uh, yeah, but uh, but yeah, Australia is a Commonwealth miner, so the Pacific is not necessarily where he's going to be seeing action. Um, we don't know where the um, where he'll be deployed. Uh, yeah, but Australia is uh, is one of those countries that are um, very versatile uh, in most areas, except for manpower. Um, but still, not a tiny nation. Uh, and also, very many people wish uh, wish to play Australia when we put up our polls before the games. So, um, another jackpot. Yeah. 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 As, as you said, uh, it is a very versatile country. I remember playing Australia on the last grand game before Bergut Hof, and uh, uh, it was like you do tanks for El Alamein, and then you defend Singapore, and uh, you can do a lot of stuff as Australia. That game, I remember we had a very static front line on Singapore until someone did some shenanigans with a floating harbor and a naval invasion, and uh, then Australia was dead. So that is uh, the issue with Australia, that if you get like wiped, you do not really have a lot of manpower in order to come back, but you can do a lot of different things uh, before that uh, potentially happens. So uh, it would be very interesting to see what Skoging does with this. Maybe a good uh, bridge to the next uh, player who played Australia twice recently. Yeah, indeed. We have uh, Ville on South Africa. Uh, that's another country that uh, uh, yeah, definitely can help out in El Alamein, uh, Alfred does so. And uh, he has a very big experience uh, or on, uh, uh, on uh, Australia. Not on South Africa, though, I think. Because he played Australia on Bergodhof. Correct. Uh, and uh, he has been us, uh, been with us since almost the very start, no, but he no. only has two stars. He had a long hiatus, but uh, when I looked through our veterans document, he was uh, in some of the games way back in uh, like uh, uh, 17, 16 and uh, those years. Uh, but he has come back recently. 
and uh, I think he performed rather well uh, during Bergodhof. What do you think about Villa's potential? You have been us, with us for long, Algot. Yeah, we can say that uh, since his return to the to the community after this uh, break, he has played uh, very much D-Day heavy uh, countries, uh, meaning like not in in the direct line of fire for being invaded yourself, but having to pull your own weight when when it comes to invading and. Yeah, we played together. Um, I was I was playing France, and he was playing Mexico, and we were basically the a- allied offensive units in Asia. And um, yeah, he likes the naval invasions. Um, he likes to play together with with um, with other players. Of course, it's a multiplayer game, but yeah, I, I think it's a great. He has good potential as South Africa, uh, which nine times out of ten, it's it's uh, armor, but. Uh, it's still a versatile country. You can go. I know Johannes has played this, uh, infantry South Africa, and um, there are different kinds of armor. Um, but I think it's um, he will be a good fit for um, for playing a, f- a few divisions, but strong divisions, and and pinpointing the allied attack. Yeah, it will be interesting to to follow. We will have an exciting LLMA, I think, and. Uh, Another one of our veteran players, uh, we have Sticky on uh, Brazil. And uh, uh, he is a player that has uh, been with us for a long time, has played a lot of different nations. And Brazil is a potentially very high impact country as well, with a lot of these miners uh, like Australia and uh, Finland uh, and, well, a lot of other miners for that matter. Uh, the problem is manpower, right? You don't have enough people. Uh, even if you have a big industry and so on, at late game, you don't have enough people to hold the guns, basically. Brazil does not suffer from that problem, rather the opposite. And uh, Brazil really has the potential of building up a lot of uh, a lot of infantry and a lot of, uh, of units. Uh, in Bergodhof, we saw a naval invasion on uh, Norvik by Brazil that I think managed to stick around for quite long. Uh, so uh, it will... Be interesting to see what what he's able to do with his country. Indeed. And um, uh, moving on, we have uh, on uh, Mongolia, uh, we have uh, uh, As uh, with uh, his four stars. Another potential high impact country, especially on the Eastern Front. Uh, The thing with Mongolia is that you're able to go more focused if you want to, because the Soviets need to hold this like entire line when the Germans come and uh, uh, Mongolia is uh, able to do a lot of different small shenanigans. We have uh, seen rocket artillery in Mongolia and it is a country with high potential. Uh, what do you think, Algot? It, it's definitely high potential, but but it's also n- not in a bad way, but it is predictable. It will be some kind of armor or some kind of motorized uh, solution coming out of Mongolia. Uh, which is desperately needed for the common turns uh, side of the of the war. Um, I don't know. I don't think Eric has played Mongolia earlier, so it will be um, it will be a challenge for him. Um, he has been on the Soviet team several times, though, so um, yeah. he's uh, familiar with the front. Uh, a big difference this game compared to previous games with Mongolia is that um, they will be allowed to join the winter war, but not participate in the war, which means that they can change their um, they go to war economy or total mobilization earlier and like get their country rolling quicker and also get land leased. So uh, it would be interesting to, uh, maybe not the war economy, but yeah, it would be interesting to see how they can um, uh, take advantage of that new rule set for this game. Yeah, that will be very interesting to see. It's a potentially a great buff for Mongolia. Yeah. And uh, on Mexico then we have Per. Another veteran player, five stars uh, he has on his uniform, uh, been with us for a long time. Don't think he has ever played Mexico, maybe he has, but um, uh, it's also one of those potentially high impact countries. We saw on Bergod Hof that uh, the US had an innovative idea where Mexico was supposed to build uh, the Air Force. Uh, for the Pacific, I don't really remember if that worked out to the Allies' advantage, to be honest, but... Uh, uh, they are quite versatile, or what do you say, Algot? Yes, they are, and uh, Par as a player is um, often overlooked, but he is a, a very stable, uh, you could say, support player, because he often plays them, uh, the co-op in, in on majors, 
Um, but he, he has a good grasp of the game, and a country like Mexico, I think he would be very comfortable. Um, not civ greeting too much, but he'll probably be, uh, be building up uh, and waiting for like the 41, 42 uh, push um, into Europe. That's my guess, at least. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we should not overlook uh, Mexico this game. And also we have an interesting one here, Ireland with Martin. I am not really sure about what Ireland's uh, way to victory is, so to speak. <laughs> Do you have yeah. any experience with Ireland, Algot? Keep the uh, potatoes healthy. <laughs> yeah, if they if they have potatoes enough, they 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 can do impact. Um, often I see you know special forces or maybe some light armor build, um, but it's the thing is you you basically have one army and then you you won't have manpower for another. So if yeah. you get wiped, you it's pretty much game over. So and it's also you're very vulnerable to to power drops and naval invasions if you don't get uh, sufficient support from the UK. So so hopefully. The UK player will make sure he's defended, and uh, you can have some game impact as Ireland. But um, yeah, it's a it's a tough country. Um, it is, but yep. you know the the lucky Irish can always surprise. Indeed, and this is also a player that uh, doesn't uh, doesn't have any stars yet. So uh, again, it's one of those where you get a set of fresh eyes on on a country. You are not uh, locked into the, the thought process of, of the veteran players, but uh, you are able to shape it to what you want it to be. And it will be interesting to see uh, what we end up with from the Irish in this game. And we have uh, Mako on uh, New Zealand. This is a first time player, I think, for us. Yeah. Yes, he's also uh, an outsider requesting to join the community. Um, um, living in Spain and playing with us for the first time. So it will be very fun to see what he can bring to the community and also, as you said, a, a new fresh pair of eyes uh, looking at uh, our way of playing. So uh, a very warm welcome uh, to the community and uh, fun to see you playing with us. Welcome, yeah, Marco. indeed. Welcome, Marco. to get uh, killed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It will it will be interesting to see how uh, how the meta changes in Hugehoy. We have gotten. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, th that's very good. Like since we have such a successful uh, broadcast and game with uh, Bagot Horse, with a lot of viewers and a lot of attention from different areas of the globe. Uh, then we have also gotten a lot of eyes on our community, and then we can also get new people in with new thoughts and new ideas, and uh, that will be very interesting in changing up and shaping our games going forward. So uh, a warm welcome to you, Marco. And uh, moving on to Holland, we have uh, Adam. I think it's actually Adam, because it's uh, Adam. not yeah. a Swede this time. <laughs> uh, it's oh, also right. a new player. Uh, from England, I believe, or am I... Am yes, I correct. correct. Uh, yes. Adam was um, joining us uh, at Bergodhof uh, from the Paradox side uh, oh, yeah. at the event. So you sat next to him for almost 12 <laughs> hours, Victor, so I think you should remember him. Yeah, I was, I was so up in the studio, you know. <laughs> After seven British pale ales, you know. Uh, yeah, exactly. you know. It's uh, when the when the alcohol content of your blood goes up, your focus goes like the tunnel vision yeah. increases. Yeah, yeah. No, no, so this is an uh, unofficial representation of Paradox at the, the game at this time. Uh, and uh, I talked to Adam a little bit. He's uh, primarily played most of his games single player and also a little bit of co-op multiplayer. So the multiplayer um, scene is rather new in this sense that we are playing. So it would be fun to see how he can fare uh, in the Pacific playing uh, Holland uh, with us. Yeah, and that's a very interesting country as well, Holland, because it's one of those countries that, I mean, you know you're going to capitulate, right? When the axis starts rolling, you will not be able to sustain that. And then you pretty much escape to uh, Indonesia. And uh, it... Uh, has a lot of potential. I remember I did some sub stuff with Holland once. It didn't have a lot of game impact that time, but it's really a country that can do a lot of things. And uh, unlike and uh, France, you don't you don't have collaborators in the in the in the homeland, so you get to keep your fleet and uh, yeah, you you don't keep your army, but you still 
compared to many other countries on this list, like Ireland and New Zealand, I would say that Holland is a, a stronger country than them, and um, and also a lot of territory in the in the in the Dutch East Indies. They can have good game impact. Yeah, and also and, that's where you get the manpower, right? Uh, you yeah. can get a lot of out out of that. But who who knows? Maybe France moves into uh, Holland this game and makes an offensive line up there. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. We will. Perhaps. We never know. Yeah. We never know. And it will be interesting to see how all those countries work together as well, like France and Holland, uh, when the Axis onslaught comes. So uh, yeah, welcome, welcome, Adam. Uh, and uh, it was very nice to have you and Paradox join us for uh, Bergård Hof. And uh, it's uh, nice to see that you have gotten a, 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 the inspiration to join us for another game. It will be very fun to to uh, watch you play. Yeah. Uh, moving on, uh, we have uh, last but not least, or maybe almost least, uh, in terms of uh, survivability, we have Remmefors, <laughs> the three-star general that will be playing Poland. What do we think of this one, Algot? Well, Remmefors is a stable player. He will um, he will put up a good fight, then he will uh, surrender, capitulate, but not, never surrender. Uh, and I think he will be back for his homeland uh, in one way or another. There's not much more to say about Poland, really. You, you will capitulate. You have um, you have some off-map factories. You have an exile function, uh, and you will you will get some divisions and some air force to be able to to help the allies on your way back. And um, I've never played them, but uh, seems like fun. I would say. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And we had in the chat here um, post where you are going to stream next time. Uh, so we will we will take that with us, uh, and if you want to want uh, watch this uh, the pregame analysis and team announcement afterwards, you can always check out our YouTube channel Hugo Hoy, and I can also encourage you to subscribe and click the bell and those things, because uh, we have a lot of interesting videos about economy, about radar, and about naval invasions and so on from the Hugo Hoy Academy, primarily by Johannes and Dawn here. And uh, yeah, uh, it would be very, very nice to, to have you there. So moving on to the pre-game analysis then, now when we have presented all our teams. Uh, I don't know where we should start. Uh, if we, we go to... Um, uh, yes, uh, to yes, to point out, we will have some streamers before we do the analysis. Uh, so yeah. Johannes will be streaming on Twitch. Uh, I will be streaming. I guess Dankus will be streaming. I think Johannes put in that little symbol there. Yes. That's so we have uh, two point of views in the Allies, one point of view in the Axis, and then of course the Higgy Gaming Studio, which you are tuned into right now, will be streaming as the observer mode, um, jumping around all over the map, yeah. uh, covering the war as best we can. That's the best way yeah. to watch the game. Definitely. And also and the studio will have access to the team's different discords. We can after a nasty pocket, we can go into the losing side, listen to listen to the panic. It will be good, good entertainment, I can yeah. promise you. And we will have an in-house studio this time as well. So me, Algot and Petter, we will be stationed at the, at the top secret location with uh, cameras and green screens and everything. So uh, we do not have like the technical, the studio personnel and in-studio interviews that we obviously were able to have at Bergodhof when we had a lot of the, uh, the technical pros at the scene and we had everyone sitting around in the house. But uh, we will be sure to uh, give you a, a, a good and uh, intense casting of the game, uh, even now when it's not physical. So, now I uh, see the Soviet main controller telling us to stay out of the comment on channel. We will not. We will uh, love to listen to what you have to say uh, in the most chaotic, uh, chaotic months of 1942. It will be, uh, it will be glorious, I think. Definitely. Uh, 